This is Twit. Uh, did you uh, get up this morning and watch the Samsung Developers Conference keynote, Stacey? <laughs> I did not get up this morning to watch that. However, I did. I did. I did see the news. Um, are, are, do we want to go into that? Because yeah, I can. There's a foldable phone. That's what there's I was a, watching. It, you know, it looked really cool in the demos, but then someone was tweeting how, with the lights on, you can clearly see the the be, the, the the line. The well, line the, of demarcation. The guy who was demonstrating it said, "This is not what it looks like. This is we've hidden it inside a case. This is normal practice with a new phone. Apple does it too. They hide them inside of kind of industrial generic cases, so you can't see the details. But what he is showing is a is phone that has a screen on the front. Looks kind of like a thick normal phone. Again, we don't know how thick because of the case. And then getting dizzy watching that loop. And then he opens it up, and it's got one screen that has unfolded." Without any yep. perceptible, you know, line down the middle. So yeah, in the in the other video with the lights on, you see the line down the middle. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, yes. Uh, who tweeted they did? That? They demoed it in the dark. Yeah. Oh, that's a so little was, uh, hocus There pocus. was a tweet from someone in the tech press who saw it the night before during the rehearsal run through. Ah. Um, but I did not like it, so it's possible I will never see it again. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I was paying attention to some of the smart thing stuff because, you know, that's, IoT. That's when I thought of you is during during the IoT presentation. They didn't mention and, security at all. Um, well, that, they mentioned interoperability. <laughs> that seemed to be a key Yeah, to this them. is this is a different interoperability than uh they had pitched. So I've been watching Samsung do this for let's see 2000 14, CES 2014, maybe it was, or 2013, when uh, Samsung's, oh, who was it who keynoted? And he just was like, la, 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 Internet of Things, hand-holding, everything's going to be magic. This was kind of a return to that. Yeah. And the problem is they're grafting this vision, which is actually still very Samsung-centric, onto a platform that was designed for super nerds and the super nerds hate the platform. And the normal people are looking at this and going, why the hell do I want my dishwasher to talk to my television? Yeah, and the, the demo they used had a refrigerator with a screen bigger than this on it. I mean, it was yeah. huge. Uh -huh. So, you know, I could be doing twig from my, my refrigerator yeah, cam no, one day. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a fan. <laughs> but yeah, so it's kind of a cool vision, but it, it's not as open as you would think. It's not as... It's not as transparent how we're going to get there to normal people. You have to do a lot on the back end. Right. And I'm not sure if it's really worth it to people who aren't named Samsung. So that's my quick 20-second take there. It seems like and, uh, and Samsung really pushed Bixby as well. Their voice assistant said they're going to spend $22 billion on AI, hire 1,000 AI developers. Uh, they, they brought the former developer of Siri who, uh, of course, when Apple acquired Siri, left Apple and started Viv, which Samsung then acquired. He's still mm -hmm. at Samsung and uh, really promoted the idea that Bixby's going to be in everything. And everywhere. how do we think that's going to work? <sighs> I'm not. I, a, I'm not a, having a Bixby, a couple of Bixby phones for the last year, the Note Nine and the S Nine with the hardware dedicated hardware button. Never used it, but that was. From a different era, that's when Bixby was just, wasn't a competitor to Amazon's Echo or Siri. It was just designed to open apps on the phone, to do things with apps on the phone. Now it's supposed to be a full-fledged voice assistant, which they kept saying is smarter than any other voice assistant you've used. And it could be with Viv. So if they do this right and they create a voice assistant where you're like, uh, hey, Bixby, uh, let, me, let me think of it. Have my doorbell contact me when the postman gets here, I like if I can that. say something like that. I like that. And that actually works. And Viv actually makes that very easy to develop on the back end, theoretically. That's it's what been they a showed. long time. That's what yeah. they showed. They showed a really nice developer environment. He booked a, a room on Mars at a hotel that was very expensive. And that was the demo. And he did a little bit of magic, turned a tape tie into a real tie, which distracted me. But... <laughs> Uh, uh, it it it's all wishing right now from Samsung. Uh, but you know what? This is a nascent technology. 
Amazon has the lead right now. Google's coming on strong. Apple would like to be there as well. Microsoft's given up with Cortana. They've really said, I don't think we're going to. They, they actually moved it to the Office 365 group this week. Huh. That, that makes that makes sense, though, because Cortana clearly isn't mm -hmm. going to be in your home life. So it's only right. going to be your assistant for business. Right. I'll say for Bixby. Here's where Bixby with the Viv could actually the Viv with Viv could win or do well. It's with creating those experiences in a way that's very seamless for the user and relatively easy for the developer. Because right now, if you want to do Amazon or Google, especially Google's still a pain to develop for. Um, it's a little bit harder. And with Viv, the theory is you would tell it. It, it, you basically use this AI, and I'm using that in big quotes here, AI, to understand what a user wants to do and automatically pull together the right APIs to make that mm -hmm. happen. So if that actually does work, that could get them into a lot of places. Uh, just because if I had one Samsung thing and I wanted to tie it to other things, it's possible that that might work. So... Yeah, it's all it's for every one of these companies, it's an ecosystem play. And this is the thing that's a little frustrating. And it's one of the things that's held back IoT, in my opinion, is everybody's a silo. So there's always this promise. In fact, Smart right. Things started was a Kickstarter based on the premise that we're going to be universal. We'll talk to Zigbee, we'll talk to Z Wave. Is it still that universal, Stacey? Um, it would like to be. I mean, yes, it will talk to all those radios. Yes, they have features that will tie into other APIs if a device has it. The problem is people are not building things that tie into smart things. Instead, everyone wants to lock down their own APIs and make it like, oh, you want to talk to the Whirlpool washing? I mean, Samsung says they'll talk to anybody. And I actually believe that they would. But Whirlpool is not going to like bust its hump to be like, oh, yeah, let me have my appliances talk to Samsung appliances That's the problem. and make sure they work. It's the historic problem with home automation going back 20 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is everybody wants to own it. Everybody wants a silo. And all I see is Samsung saying our silo, our silo, not Amazon's, not Apple's, not, not, not Google's, our silo, our silo. And nobody wants to be... I, maybe I, it feels like nobody no consumer wants to say okay i'm just gonna buy all apple just, stuff it'll all work yeah better. and, and we, well consumers do actually buy all apple stuff just to make it work better they're the that's only one craziness that's the but, only company samsung no right well Are people the, loyal the to samsung and say i'm only gonna buy samsung stuff so mm, some countries i mean uh, i'm sure some yeah <laughs> i bet in korea, korea south korea they're yeah. really big there um it's not just, I mean, the one of the problems is we don't have, that's what OCF was trying to do. We don't have the equivalent of a, a hypertext, you know, the, for the internet of things. So we don't have a data schema that everything uses that you can kind of build around. You have to do custom for everything. And that was the problem that we all saw back in 2013, even when Samsung was like, we'll be open, it'll be amazing. It's that doesn't scale. That doesn't scale beyond computing because the real world has so many more devices and things you have to care about. And the computing guys are, I don't know if they're willfully blind to this or what, but yeah, it, 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 it's not. And there still aren't great use cases for some of this stuff. Like, you know, do I need my refrigerator to talk to my television? I I right. really don't think so. But is, is Stacy? Is there a, an unused standard in this? There, well, there's the OCF, which is long and storied, and went through some efforts, and that's got Intel, Samsung, Huawei, LG are all involved, and that's basically a data schema for over a hundred different devices. So it says basically, like, I'm a light bulb. If you're a light bulb and you use OCF, it's going to say. This is how you turn recognize the light bulb. This is how it turns on, off, goes through X mm -hmm. number of colors, dims, et cetera. You see Amazon took that, and instead of using something like the data schema from OCF, they created a voice-related data schema um, with three different things, an on, off, a range, and a mode setting. So, again, that's, that's another way of doing it. And they exist. There's just a lot of them. What would it take? I'm asking the two of you. For you to, I mean, Stacy is actually a bad person to ask because you do all of this. You try mm -hmm. it all. You've got blinds that won't open, but could if Andrew would just say the right words, that kind of thing. Uh, but 
<laughs> so maybe I should ask Jeff, but I'll ask you, Stacey, put yourself in a normal person's mindset. What would it take for home automation to take off? I thought we were there. I thought way mm. back in 2012 and 2013, I thought I saw the creation of those standards. It was all join. Um, OCF was coming around the pike and things like smart things that really did want to try to work with everything. You'll agree, though, it, we're not there. We're not. We're not. So it takes a universal standard. It takes cheaper devices, right? So mm -hmm. at the time, you had devices that were very expensive. It also takes a really good and coherent communication of the value to an end user, which the tech right. companies just blew right past. Like, you can remotely turn on your crockpot is a really crappy reason to spend $150 for like a connected crockpot, right? You're talking to the guy who got Bluetooth pots and pans. I mean, it's, <laughs> right. it's dopey. It's dopey. And that's why you see things like security systems. Those do really well. You saw the Nest yeah. do well for a while because it had energy savings associated yeah. with it. For a while. Yeah. Why did the Nest stop doing well? I, I think there's a very big price ceiling yeah. of number it's of people who are going to spend that much. I, and there you go, back to price. But I think also it's just, like if you could, Jeff, if you could move into a home that it, it was all set up mm -hmm. and everything worked with your voice and it worked reliably, that would be okay, right? It's the idea. Yeah, of, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, you know, imagine when we had Cat 5 through the whole house. Ooh, yeah. right? <laughs> um, and... Uh, but but Stacy says it's right. It's about standards, and and it's not just about standards that exist today. It's about standards you have the faith they're going to exist in uh, five I think ten it's years. Even more. You know, basic my house than used that. to have a, an intercom in it. Yeah, and it wasn't Remember an issue of standards, but it's but but they they were bad and they died and they're still. Remember, people would wire know, speakers stuck. in their house. Yeah. They they spent a lot of money to put wired speakers in. Uh, there. You're old enough to remember when remember. people would wire speakers in their house. I think I don't. I think I it, have wired speakers. Well, you're not, again, in no way do you... Stacey, okay, you sorry, are the queen sorry. of IoT. 